Hi, I'm Ian and welcome to Astro Time Traveller. In this video I'm going to show you my new telescope, the Skywatcher EvoStar 72ED. Um, I'm going to show you the description of the telescope and then how I've used it. Skywatcher EvoStar 72ED. Uh, I'm going to show you as I take it out of the case, so it's not an unboxing, but it maybe it's an uncasing. It comes in this really nice uh, uh, case. So I just open it up, and if I turn it round to show you from this side, uh, there it is. So it fits really nicely in the case. It's well padded inside. It's upside down with the dovetail facing up. Um, so let me just take the telescope out. There it is, that looks pretty, pretty nice. Let's just put that down and show you in the case, you've got the padding as I've described. Um, you have this cover that came actually on the rotator for the focuser. You've got a key if you want to lock the case. And you also have this, which is to attach um, the focal reducer flattener, if you get that, which I'll come on to. So really nice case, closes up, keeps everything secure. Let's put that to one side and let's look at the telescope. So we put that down. So here's the telescope. Uh, really light. It's uh, under two kilograms, which is really fantastic. So it's the Evo Star 72 ED, uh, which is a 420 millimeter focal length, 72 diameter. Uh, but if you add the focal reducer for flattener, which is 0.85, that will reduce it down to around 360 to 370. Um, actually on mine, I think I got 377 was the focal length when I did imaging the other night. So from the, from the front to the, to the bottom of the telescope, um, you have a nice aluminium cap here, which is screwable. So you unscrew that and within there is the lens. And on front of that is you have a dew shield, which you can take off and put on to clean the lens, which is really easy. Uh, you have a camera hot shoe here if you wanted to put a camera on top. I will take that off, so uh, I'll put my guide scope on top here. I'll show you a bit later. You've got the uh, rings here for holding the telescope, fitted to the standard Skywatcher green uh, dovetail at the bottom, which I think is 45 millimeters in length, which is really good. Uh, and then back at the end here, you've got the focuser. Two parts to that, you've got the focusing on this side and on this side. But if I turn this round, not only do you have the normal focusing here with the, you see the travel out of the focuser, but you've got here, the rotator, the small one is fine tuning. So really get in to get uh, on focus with your baton off mask, etc. So that's really good. Pull that back in. And then on the other side, you've got a Vixen a plate to putting in your finder scope if you wanted to use that there which is a standard fitting and then right at the bottom you've got uh, the access through to the actual telescope you've got again another cover here plastic which comes off and you've got the uh, item to put in your camera accessories so that's the, the telescope as a whole let me show you now what you need to do if you want to add uh, imaging to it uh, let's start off with a DSLR camera I will personally mostly be using a one-shot colour camera, but let's show you what the DSLR looks like. So first thing we need to do is take off this, which easily unscrews. And we're going to actually add the focal reducer. So in addition, I bought this, which was the focal reducer. So this is a really good price for about £270. This focal reducer is another 100 and almost 90 pounds. So it's expensive, but it's very helpful to get a really good wide field of view, pin, pin sharp stars. So as I said earlier, you get this that comes with the telescope, which you put on to then add the focal reducer to it. So if we just attach this, there it catches. And then the focal reducer, it's 0.85. So that's how it reduces from 420 down to 360, 370. And again, that just attaches at the end of the telescope, which is really nice. And then you've got at the end of here, another cap which unscrews. 
and to attach a DSLR camera, you need a kind of T ring, which is this. So again, you have to acquire this. That then fixes onto the local reducer, and then you're ready to attach the camera. Now, the only thing is, when you attach the camera, the red spot here for attaching is underneath. So what I also have acquired, but I haven't used in my first imaging, is this, which is a, a rotator. So I can fit the camera on and then rotate it round. So let me put that on to show you what that looks like as well. Now to do that, you take off the focal reducer. And in fact, the connector that comes with the telescope you no longer need, because you're gonna use the rotator. So let me just take that off, put that to one side. And now if I add the rotator, you need to make sure the movable bit is at the back. If I fix this on, some of these are a little bit fiddly to go. Let's it in. Now I should probably tighten this up first before I put the focal reducer and the camera on, and then we'll re-tighten it once we know what place we want it in. So again, add the focal reducer, simply just screws on. It's already got the T, now I need to just move that red dot. So if I unscrew the rotator, I can now move my red dot to around that place to start with, tighten it down, and then I can attach my DSLR camera. So to add the DSLR camera, let me just take the lens off the camera, put that to one side, um, and then you just line up the red dot. There we are, the camera's fixed. And you can see it's actually in pretty good shape in terms of being centered with that. So there you go, that's a DSLR camera. You can see the balance uh, needs that extra dovetail that I've got, so that will help balance the camera when it's actually being shot. Um, so that's it with the DSLR camera. Let me show you with my colored camera, called color camera, because that's what I will tend to generally use. So first off, we take this camera off, put that to one side, let's just reattach the lens, keep it secure. There we go. Uh, we don't need the attachment for the T-ring, so that can come off. Um, this is 48 mil, so need some attachments for that. So I've got one here, it doesn't quite get me to the right back focus but it's uh, okay for attaching the camera. So now we can attach the ZWO 294 MC Pro cooled color camera, which is my main camera that I use. And there we go, that goes like that. And again, hasn't quite got up the top, so what I can do is just unhook, turn it around, and re-hook up. Now the good thing about this element at the front, the rotator, is it can also take a two inch filter attached to the front, therefore it's right here, and therefore you can actually have a filter train as well. So there it is, that's it attached, uh, fully locked down. You may need to look at the, uh, the knobs for that, but that's, that's it. So very heavy at the back, which is why you need that extra spacer. And then measuring the actual back focus should be 55, and I'm measuring this here, I'm getting to about 57. Yep. Just, there we go, yep. just over 57. So it's a bit too uh, long, but it worked fine when I used it the other day uh, for the first imaging. So now let me show you the full setup when I put my guide scope on top as well, uh, and with the uh, dovetail plate uh, for underneath. And I'll also show you how I fit my ISA Pro, which I uh, attach to the shoe here, so everything's on top of the uh, telescope. So let me just come back and I'll just show you that. So just before I show you the full camera setup, as I said just now, let me just show you on the attachment that goes in to do the rotation, so you can put a two inch filter in. So here's my Optolong Enhance filter, and it goes in this side, and you just connected in there, and then that goes back in, as we saw earlier. Let's get it to connect, there we go. So you now have a nice filter in there. Obviously you can't change the filters during sessions as easily uh, with this method, but this method will work pretty well. And then if we add on the 
focal reducer flattener to the whole train. You then got your filter in there for what you want. You've got the camera set up. So that's that's it. So that's as I image. So I would do my imaging like that with my batten off mask on to get in focus. Um, so that's pretty much how I go. So what I put on the top here, on top of the dovetails, is my ZWO uh, 60 millimeter, 280 focal length guide scope, uh, together with the ZWO 120mm mini for my guide camera, and attached on the side is the ASI Air Pro. Uh, so that's how it all looks. Um, so it looks pretty mighty, but actually the weight and balance is good. Now, on my first night of using this, I was just amazed. So I think this is a fantastic product. The, the stars came out superbly round across the whole field of view. Um, and I'll show you that in the image of Andromeda uh, that you'll see at the end of the video. So that's my setup. I'll put all the details of what equipment is here, what accessories I've got uh, in the details below. So you can see exactly what I've used uh, to help you if you want to set up something similar like this. So here we are in my back garden in uh, Surrey, unusually a snowy day uh, here we haven't had for two years. But I've now set up the, the mount outside to the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. Uh, and we've got the cable coming out from my shed into the box where I have uh, the electronic power units to go onto the mount and the telescope. So we're already set up, I've got the weight on as ready. So now we're ready to put the uh, telescope on top. So why don't I go and get that and we'll see what that looks like with the telescope on in a second. So here it is. So as I said, it's the Skywatcher Evo Star 72ED telescope uh, attached on there. And then on top of that, I've got the ZWO 60 millimeter diameter, 280 millimeter focal length guide scope. And at the back of the guide scope, I've got the ZWO 120mm mini guide camera, uh, which is uh, attached through to the rest of the kit. I've got the ASR Pro attached on the side, and at the back I've got both the focal reducer and the ZWO294 MC Pro cord colour camera. And you can see the guide scope camera is attached to the main camera, which is equally then attached up to the ISA Pro. And again, you can see the ISA Pro is then attached to the mount. So everything works off the ISA Pro which I found a brilliant piece of uh, kit to, to make everything work very simply. So everything is kind of ready uh, and attached to go. The next thing we need to do is really think about putting on the dew straps for the, uh, the evening. So let's show what that looks like uh, next. So here we are, I've got uh, the dew straps on the uh, telescope, on the guide scope and on the guide camera. And then on the actual image camera, I've got the ZWO dew uh, cover that goes on there as well. So everything's ready for imaging. Uh, power's on. I have everything in this box. Uh, I put the lid down during imaging so uh, if there is any frost, it prevents it going on any of the electronic equipment. But there we are. We're ready to go. There are lots of wires, but it's very firmly held on with the additional uh, plate I put on and ready for imaging. So I just thought I'd show you here. This is a a screenshot of the ASI Air Pro which is running and you can see the uh, tracking at the top of the uh, guide camera which is uh, looking pretty good uh, and you can see even on the screen you get a good picture coming across of the actual image taken of uh, M31 the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, I'll do a video on more detail on how I use the ASI Pro in my, probably my next video uh, but I thought I'd just give you a quick screenshot of how it looks.